Hi, Mark here from AmericanAeration.com, and in this video, I want to do part two of I think I killed all my fish, but you can avoid it if you know what to do. And uh, if you haven't seen part one, I talk a little bit about the importance of aeration and how useful that is for protection for fish, especially during hot weather, but also some things you need to know, some modifications you may want to make to a well set up aeration system in very specific conditions, usually involving high heat, <clears throat> shallow ponds. There's just some things you need to do because aerating in those extreme conditions and situations can actually cause problems for fish. So in part two, I want to address a couple of other instances and mistakes that can be made that can cause catastrophic fish loss. The first one is involving aeration again, and this is about the introduction of aeration to a new pond, or better said, an existing pond, particularly one that is older, may have some uh, muck and sludge build up at the bottom, warm to hot weather. Introducing an aerator at those uh, times of year can be very stressful for the fish, but it also can be life-saving if you can get ahead of the curve, meaning do it before it gets hot. A lot of people don't do that though, and then they start to lose fish and they want to get an aerator in there really fast and they feel like getting it up and running as fast as they can is going to be the answer to the problem, but what happens is it actually creates more of an issue. You can introduce an aerator, a subsurface aerator by the way, too quickly in hot weather and in older ponds. And what this does is it basically overmixes, uh, stirs the pond up way too much too fast, releases a lot of bottom sediment. There's a lot of trapped gases down there that m you may want them to come out slowly, but not quickly. And it's too much or too abrupt of a change for the fish and then they suffer. And you can lose a lot of fish if you do this wrong. So the suggestion is to start slowly. Um, when you first install the aerator, plug it in and run it 20 to 30 minutes the first day and then stop. The second day, you would double that run time. Basically, each day you would continue to double the run time until you reach 24-7 uh, operation. If you see any issues come up, turbidity of the water gets darker, fish start acting funny, you can always slow down and, and back off a little bit and let things settle. If you have multi-diffusers, you can also do the same in a sequential uh, manner, starting one gradually and then bringing the second one online and so forth until you're up to full coverage. The other thing that can happen and happens to a lot of people, I think more know about it now than in years past, but if you have an algae or weed problem and you attempt to get rid of it, particularly with chemicals, and you try to kill off too much of it, too quickly, you can also lose fish that way because what happens is that the, when the plant dies, the uh, it will pull oxygen from the water and you can get a, a very large oxygen drop if you kill off a big mass of plant growth very quickly and that's what chemicals, algicides, uh, herbicides do. So you got to be real careful and especially the hotter the weather when the you know, water temperature is over 78 degrees Fahrenheit, it will not hold a lot of oxygen. And so you have to be very careful in those conditions. The solution is to kill the plant off gradually if you can do so. Uh, string algae and most weeds can be managed that way, but you just work at the issue in segments, uh, smaller sections, just killing off a bit at a time, working over a period of days or, or longer to knock everything down. And then Usually when you're able to do that and aerate at the same time, your fish can handle it fine. And, uh, you know, you can you can have a clearer pond without a massive fish loss. So um, those are, I think, two of the more common things that we have seen over the years that have caused people a lot of losses. And in part three, we'll talk about one other thing that you need to watch for uh, and just a very brief general discussion on some of the things that can kill fish, not in mass quantities, uh, large die-offs, but things that you can watch for and we'll provide some resources that will help you keep your fish in better shape uh, all summer long. So stay tuned for that. For now, 
thanks for joining me again. Uh, if you have questions about your pond or pond aeration in general, just reach out to us at AmericanAeration.com. We're happy to help, and I hope you have a great day wherever you are.